Now it's time to figure out what happened last night in Memphis at the Grindhouse, and it's your Thunder cover brought to you by Farmers Insurance with Darnell Mayberry of NewsOK.com in the Oklahoman. What's going on, Darnell? So much. How are you guys doing today? No, I, no, we're doing all right, man. It's beautiful weather in Oklahoma today, so we can't complain. Boy, the Grindhouse, that place was getting out of control last night in the fourth quarter in overtime. Yeah, and it actually was started late in the third when uh, the, the Grizzlies cut that 17-point deficit down to about two. Mark Gasol hit a 20-foot jumper, cut it to 72-70. That place started rocking. The fans started waving those towels, and the music started blaring. Uh, and right then, you knew the Thunder was in trouble. Yeah, you know, I, I agree there. You also saw a, a lot of more offense out of this Thunder team uh, in Game 4 than we've seen down the stretch here. Some other guys getting involved. Look like they're running quite a few set plays and stuff. Is this some adjustments that Coach Brooks has made? I think he made a few adjustments. Uh, you know, still probably not as many as most would like. Uh, you know, they probably – Still play Kendrick Perkins too much for most people's liking, and um, not enough Nick Collison, even though that, you know, he had. Darnell, no where that. the heck was Kevin Martin down the stretch? Sorry to cut Kevin you Martin off there, was, but where? Kevin Martin was the next one. I mean, that's the biggest one. And I think he really wanted defense out there. He went with Derek Fisher, even though Derek Fisher played a dud game. I think he wanted some defense out there, so uh, it looked bad, but it might not have been as bad as it looked. Uh, so does he have any buttons left to push, though, Darnell? I mean, you know, he, he did a lot of different movements, a lot of changing up of uh, the rotations and different things. Is is there anything left uh, once they come back tomorrow night for Game 5? Well, I think he probably needs to get back to trying to free up Durant and, you know, not necessarily getting on his hands to start the possessions late in the games because the Grizzlies are keying so much attention on him defensively. Maybe run him off the screen, something that we've talked about in the past, and trying to get him open. Uh, because right now the Grizzlies are locking locking in on him and putting so much attention on Durant that you know he's really struggling down the stretch in games. So uh, I'd like to see him try to free up, do something uh, scheme-wise to try to free up Durant. I agree, man. The Thunder, the offense looked so good for a big majority of last night. Kevin Martin the different things he was doing, get to the free throw line, creating off the dribble, uh, even Serge Ibaka hitting some jumpers. Reggie Jackson was pushing the tempo, uh, you know, getting some easy layups, even went for that really nice dunk. I thought it was Russell Westbrook in there. I mean, the offense was really clicking along, and then here we come down the stretch in the fourth quarter, and everything just completely stops. You sit Kevin Martin on the bench, and you go complete one-on-one basketball with Kevin Durant right there in the end of the fourth quarter in overtime. And we've been talking about it all day. In my opinion, it's, it's, that's not a recipe for victory. And we want to know this, Darnell, because we're trying to figure it out, and we don't know exactly, and you're around the team all the time. Who makes that call late in games? Is that Scott Brooks that says, okay, KD, you're going to take this game over? Or is that KD just saying, give me the ball, I'm going to take care of business? You know, it's both. Kevin Durant is the star player, the franchise player for a reason. The guy has won three straight scoring titles and you know, three of the last four, so – he obviously can put the ball in the hole, but Scott Brooks, you know, if he didn't go to Durant and somebody else failed, then we'd be criticizing him for not going to Durant, you know. But having, with that being said, I still would like to see another option would be use Durant as sort of a decoy, let Reggie Jackson try to create something, uh, whether he can break down his man or drive and kick to someone else. And You know, Durant doesn't always have to be the guy. Use him as a decoy and, and see what you can get out of that. I'm with you. I, I'm not. I, that's the thing is, I'm not asking for Kevin Durant to go stand in the corner on a couple of possessions. I'm just, you know, movement. Different guys moving. Even if you right. do run Kevin Durant off of a screen, have other guys cut into the basket. Something. I mean, all we've seen is I, it's not all you've seen because I saw last night Tony Allen late in the game chasing Kevin Durant around like a crazed dog. I mean, he was in his hip pocket following every step and there were some times when he didn't start with the ball at the top he couldn't get the ball because he was getting doubled and Tony Allen was in his hip pocket and there were no clear passes to him so that's yeah, why I felt like that's why I felt like late that's why I felt like late they went ahead and let him bring the ball up because Tony Allen just the ferocious defender that he is was denying the basketball a lot there but late that's the exact point though is there's nothing else to do if they can't get the ball to Durant right there with Tony Allen denying then the whole thing is a wash and they don't know what else to do 
Yeah, and that's when the stuff really breaks down and it really looks bad because nobody else knows what to do and nobody else really is capable of making anything happen. Reggie Jackson is, is the most likely to make something happen, but when the ball ends up in Tabo Cephalosha's hands or, or, you know, worse, Kendrick Perkins' hands, then, then you know, the possession is not going to end well. So uh, I think what the Thunder has to do is get back to moving the ball. When they move the ball, things generally go well for this team. But when they don't, you know, that's when they struggle down the stretch. Here's my, you know, Darnell, we've been talking about this a lot today. And you look at these four games, and they're all a little bit different. But in the end, they're the same in the fact that they come down to the uh, – we're talking a one-possession game, three minutes to go in all four games. I mean, no matter how they got there, it's all been different. Different guys chipping in, sometimes no offense. They've all come down to who's going to execute, who's going to make the plays in crunch time. Game one, it was Kevin Durant, Oklahoma City Thunder win. Games two, three, and four, that guy that this team has to have with no Russell Westbrook, Kevin Durant, for all the great things that he's done throughout this series – Three straight games now has not shown up in crunch time. They're late in the fourth, and then last night the fourth and overtime. Yeah, and it's unfortunate because that's what great players are, are paid to do. That's where they earn their, their reputations is in the fourth quarter, late in games when the, when the game is on the line. So uh, Durant has done everything that he possibly can to get his team there and carry his team, so you can't really get too down on him or, or criticize him too much. But the last three games definitely have been disappointing because he's got to be able to finish out games. And uh, so far in the last three games, he hasn't been able to do that. Here's my theory. Uh, you know, throughout the most of the season, the last year in the playoffs, uh, Russell Westbrook w- drove the offense. He created all the tempo. He created the action throughout the majority of the game. Kevin Durant would get some looks here and there, but we're always asking him to shoot shoot the ball more, get more offense going. But then when the fourth quarter rolls around, he hasn't expelled all his all of his energy. Everyone else has been chasing Westbrook around. That's when Kevin Durant really starts leaning on people. That's whenever he can create open shots. Now, fast forward to Russell Westbrook in a, a brace up in the up in the suite. Kevin Durant has to do it the entire game. Andy has to play double duty where he's guarding one of the best centers in the league on the other end. By the time the fourth quarter rolls around, and usually he is stepping up his game at this point, since everything is on his shoulders, he doesn't have that extra gear to go to. That's a great theory, and I agree with it, but the thing is, you're the second best player in the world. You have to. You have to find that next gear. You just If right. this team's going to win, you can shake your head all you want. If Oklahoma City's going to win, he has to find that next gear. And They're he has not going to gonna be able... win unless other people get involved, even whatever. But closing down out the, basketball down games, the Kevin Durant has to be that guy. Kevin Durant takes your last shot, but you don't just completely go to him with five minutes left in the fourth quarter and completely go to him in overtime. If you Here's want him to take idea. the last shot, I agree 100%. Yeah, here's an idea. Why don't you start? And it, it might be much too late. I mean, it's 3-1. Only eight teams have ever come back from a 3-1 hole. So, you know, next year this will be water under the bridge. But here's an idea. For tomorrow night, why don't you let Reggie Jackson and Serge Ibaka sort of control the offense in the first quarter, let Kevin Martin do his thing to start the second quarter, and let Kevin just sort of easy work his way in there, easy. And... And then, as in the second half, that's when Kevin Durant can really take over and, and get up the shots and, and, and take control of that offense. I like it. This is Thunder Cover brought to you by Farmers Insurance. That's Darnell Mayberry of the Oklahoma and NewsOK.com talking some thunder. More when we get back. We're at the Trails Golf Club at Norman Highway 9 and Berry Road. It's The Rush, Sports Talk Network. Twenty minutes past the hour. It's hour number four. Welcome back, Teddy Lehman, jamming out to my right. Dusty Dvorak, right here. Drake Dykin, back in studio. Beautiful Tuesday, May the fourteenth. Absolutely gorgeous outside. We're here at the Trails Golf Club. The sun is shining, and it's a great day to play some golf, enjoy golf with your friends, entertain clients, or introduce your family to the game that you love. Great atmosphere here. It's friendly, casual, and professional. Golf course is beautiful. Carved out of these cottonwood trees. Everything in full bloom, everything greened up. Brand new greens on the front that they put in last April. They are rolling outstanding. The bunkers are absolutely pristine right now. And they've got the um, uh, swimming pool that's opening up Memorial Day weekend. Always do great things here with the family. 
Family burger nights every Wednesday, men's league golf Thursday evening at 530, and then regular MGA events on Saturdays. And they've always got all kinds of great events going on. Just give them a call for any and all of your membership questions, 405-364-3790, or just be sure to check them out online, trailsgolf.com. This hour brought to you by the Riverwind Casino and Hotel, located just south of Norman, off of Highway 9 and I-35, 219,000 square feet, over 2,700 electronic games, 30 table games, a poker room, open 24-7, off-track betting, and a high-limits room. The restaurants include the Willows Buffet and Chips and Ales for concert and comedy show reservations. Give them a call. One eight seven 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 eight seven ninety six thirty seven. Back to Thunder Cover. We're brought to you by Farmers Insurance with NewsOK.com and the Oklahomans Darnell Mayberry. Darnell, sorry if we're a little fired up today. We're just, uh, you know, it's playoff basketball. We got to bring it. You, hey, you guys got a right to be fired up. Everybody in the state should be fired up. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So you said it earlier. You mentioned it. Uh, you know, eight times out of one ninety four. I think it's a. Uh, uh, I read an article you were very put out. Only a 4% of NBA teams have dug out of a 3-1 hole before. Uh, two of these three games will have the potential of being at Chesapeake Arena. Uh, I mean, how much of an advantage does that give Oklahoma City? I mean, what's the mindset right now, Darnell? It's got to be one game at a time, right? Yeah, it's that one game at a time approach. And it's cliche, but I mean, you guys know it's, it's true. Um, you know, that's the way that they have to approach it, and they have to make sure that they get game five before they can get game six or seven. So uh, if they just focus on game five, and I think there are four things that the Thunder has to do well. The first is obviously taking care of the ball. They've got a rebound. Uh, those, those are the first two. Then the role players have to step up. If those role players continue to play like they did last night in game four, Thunder's going to have a great chance at, at winning game five. And then the last thing, is we talked about it, Kevin Durant has got to show up in the fourth quarter and, and then late in the fourth quarter and, and carry his team to a win. If they do those four things, they'll be able to get out of there with a win in game five and extend this series. Yeah, I, I like that, man. I, I like that, that, that. That's a pretty good formula there, rebounding. We saw a couple times down the stretch. It seems like Memphis has a really good knack at getting the critical – offensive rebounds at the critical times whenever they really need one they need an extra possession the clock is starting to run short it seems like the ball just bounces their way i know i know it's a lot of positioning and they're really skilled at it but man it just seems like whenever they absolutely need to get one it, it happens Zebo right there. and gasol getting those big frames in the way yep yeah and that's unfortunate last night i mean the thunder played some pretty good defense in the last minute and a half and yet the Grizzlies got three offensive rebounds in that stretch, and that really helped them stave off the Thunder and really keep them at bay. Uh, and, and the Thunder wasn't able to take the lead. You know, fortunately for them, they got Kevin Durant a, a driving layup with six seconds left, and that, that was able to extend the game and, and send it to overtime. But that defense just, it, you know, it's futile if they don't close out the possession with the rebound, and we've seen it throughout uh, the season, we've seen it in two of the four games now in this series that they don't rebound the basketball. They're basically playing behind the eight ball because uh, they're not giving themselves a chance to close out possessions and, and really help their own cause defensively. You're listening to Thunder Cover brought to you by Farmers Insurance with NewsOK.com and the Oklahomans Darnell Mayberry. Third quarters, too. Uh, you know, we saw this, you know, towards the end of the Houston series. Really didn't play well coming out of the half in this series. Uh, in this game especially, third quarter so big for Memphis. And I want to get your take. It wasn't just the third quarter. It's about the six-minute mark of the second quarter. Could you feel it? 17-point lead in the stadium. Uh, i got to imagine it was a pretty silent grindhouse at that point in time. But once they kind of cut it to eight right there before the half, could you kind of feel, were they seizing that momentum? Was it palpable right there in the arena? Yeah, no doubt about it. I was sitting next to two guys who had made the drive from Nashville uh, and they, they had great seats as fans. They got to sit right there at the scores table. Paid a lot of money for the seats, but, you know, they were great fans and, you know, respectful fans. And they said, you know, to each other and to me, you know, we were talking throughout the whole game. They said, man, we're lucky we got it within eight. They just said, we, we got it yeah. to single digits, and this is big. You know, they, everyone sort of knew it. And when the Thunder was up 17, they were just rooting for the Grizzlies to bring it within single digits, and when they went into the locker room down only eight, you just kind of felt like, you know, they're going to put themselves in position to win this game, and that's exactly what they did. The biggest disappointment for me was was right there in overtime, down the stretch, there's 22 seconds left, I believe, 
you're down three, you're coming out of a timeout, you've just uh, drawn up a play, I'm sure, for Kevin Durant to go for the tie with a three, and you just turn the ball over right there, and the game's over. That was just so disappointing. Uh, I mean, I knew I know KD didn't have it really going there in the fourth quarter and in overtime, but, you know, he found a way to get the layup in there, forced the overtime, and I was just hoping that he was going to find a way to make the three to tie it up there and give them a chance, and then they just just dumped the ball over on a stupid inbounds play. That was really, really frustrating. And you know that's Derek Fisher, Ted and Darnell. Yep. And, you know, I, I wanted to get your take, Darnell. That's kind of how I feel. We've seen Scotty Brooks since he's brought in Derek Fisher, played him a lot more minutes than what everybody's thought. And his whole playoff, take your hat off to him, Derek Fisher's played unbelievable. He's been outstanding defensive end. He's made uh, over 50% from threes, but last night – Seemed like the guy we saw at the end of the season, right? Seemed like the guy who couldn't make shots, who was making mistakes, wasn't a very good defender. And I just felt like, is it Scott Brooks? He just drinks so much of the Derek Fisher Kool-Aid, and he's no, he's seen what he can do throughout the early on in the playoffs. Is that a detriment to his judgment in that point in time? Because clearly, I thought, clearly, Kevin Martin should have been on the floor right there. Yeah, and not just Kevin Martin, guys, but one of the subtle things that Scott Brooks has done a pretty good job of uh, you know, for years is having Cabo Cephalosha as the inbounder yeah. in that situation. And in this mm-hmm. case, because, you know, of his love or man crush, whatever you want to call it, for Derek Fisher, he had Fisher in the game instead of Cabo Cephalosha. And you can only think and, and ask yourself, if Cabo Cephalosha was making that inbound play, how would this game have been different? Hey, Darnell, you know, it's uh... – I guess with the Thunder, their playoff lives on the line right now. The talk is ramped up. The whole Kendrick Perkins talk, uh, should they amnesty him? What are they going to do moving forward? I mean, what are your thoughts on this? Because here's the thing. When when Tabit comes in the game, I, I know he's not as good as a, a low-post defender. I know he's not. But I, I never find myself just clamoring to, they got to get Kendrick Perkins back in or we're doomed. I never find that. I think he comes in. I think he, he serves a purpose. He does fine. Kind of like I feel the same way with Kendrick Perkins. Per, uh, Kendrick Perkins, he comes in. He serves a purpose. I don't, I don't feel like there's that big of a fall off. In... Except, except in price tag. One's making right. 900K. One's making over $8 million. <laughs> Yeah, you can't forget about that salary. I mean, that's, that's a huge element in all this. And it's funny because when Nick Collison found out, I think the Thunder was ahead by three, and then Gasol went to the line. Might have been Zach Randolph, but one of them went to the line and then cut it to one. Uh, and you're thinking, okay, is the Thunder going to – they had to put Kendrick Perkins back in, and you just kind of felt like, oh, boy, here we go, because the Thunder was playing so well, and you felt like they were headed for a victory, and you just weren't quite sure if Kendrick Perkins was going to be able to come in there and, and, and continue that momentum or if his presence – was going to disrupt the team's offensive flow uh, and really hurt them. But uh, I, I see exactly what you guys are saying. I mean, the Thunder is going to have to do something next year. I don't think it's going to be amnesty. I'm, I'm pretty positive that it's not going to be amnesty uh, just because there's several factors that it's going to pre- prevent them from, from having a chance to do that. But uh, they're going to have to figure out some way to be able to get kids with Perkins to not hurt them so much on the offensive end next year. Yeah, and, you know, he'd like to at least get some help rebounding. Two rebounds last night. Uh, it just has not been the best series for him. And this is what we always hear. Oh, this is what he's here for. He's here to go against these, you know, these post players. Well, uh, one dropped, what, 24 and 12, the other 23 and 11, somewhere in that vicinity. So, we, you know, I know that they, they're down there working, and those guys are tough covers, and they're good basketball players. But uh, I don't know. I just I don't know if you're getting it out, enough out of a guy who's making that much money. Darnell, we won't get a chance to talk to you tomorrow. Quickly, the psyche of this basketball team, I mean, nobody knows them better than you. How do you think, what, what do you think their mindset is right now with their backs up against the wall coming back home? Well, I think coming home is definitely going to help them, and they know that the crowd's going to be loud, they're going to be proud, they're going to be behind them, uh, and they're going to try to use that, that energy in the arena to, to get off to a great start and try to get this win. However, I do feel like if this is a close game in the last two minutes again, there's going to be that here we go feeling, and I, I, there might be some some hesitation and some some nerves that kick in, at knowing full well that the last three games haven't gone their way in those last two or three minutes. So uh, if it's a close game again, you know, I, I'm I'm not so sure the Thunder's going to have what it takes mentally at this point to close it out. So the best thing I think the Thunder can do is take care of business early and try to get a good lead 
and, and hold on to that lead so it's not down to the final two or three minutes. Yeah, hopefully, you know, that home crowd kind of pushes those nerves out as, as the pressure's building there and you've got that big crowd behind you. Hopefully that kind of drowns out the pressure and you're able to hit those shots down the stretch. Yeah, yeah, good point. Who wins tomorrow, uh, Darnell? I don't know. You're probably going to put it in the paper tomorrow, but if we get a sneak preview, we won't get a chance to talk to you till Thursday after the game. Are the Thunder going to come back home and extend this series? Man, this is tough. I, you know, going to Memphis after the Grizzlies won the second game, I, you know, I predicted Memphis in five, and everyone else at the paper predicted Memphis in six. I just think that the, the Grizzlies – are focused right now. They've been talking about it the past couple of days. This is different than two years ago. They know how important this is now. They don't feel like they've arrived. So uh, if, they, they, if they can just make it a close game, I think the Grizzlies will win it. Uh, but if the Thunder can get out to that good lead, I think the Thunder will win it. But I, right now, I'd have to pick the Grizzlies. Great stuff as always, Darnell. Love having you on, man. Always fun talking basketball with you. Uh, enjoy the game tomorrow night. We'll talk on Thursday. That's Thunder Cover brought to you by Farmers Insurance with Darnell Mayberry of NewsOK.com and The Oklahoman. Quick break. We'll be back. We're right here at the Trails Golf Club in Norman, Highway 9 and Barry Road. All kinds of great stuff going on here. The Joes will be joining us next segment. He's at L. Del Mitchell Senior Night, Dallas Baptist in town. they got 50-cent Franks. They've got fireworks tonight. Get out there. Check out the OU Baseball. Last chance to catch them at home. Rest of the season. Quick break. We'll be back. It's The Rush, Sports Talk Network.